Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Home Studio Corner. In this video, I'm going to answer a question from, where are you? There you are, Bjorn, on my How to Use Reverb video. And it says, you have very good tutorials. I wonder, is it possible to use effects on just a section or part of a track, i.e. the delay on a single guitar one or two times during the song when the guitar is normal the rest of the song? Great question. Also, thank you for that right there. Appreciate that. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do this uh, because it's something that you'll want to do a lot uh, on your songs. Maybe not every song you work on in every mix, but I would say every you know EP that I work on, there's at least a handful of times across those songs where I want to automate a certain effect to come on just for certain sections. Now there's a lot of ways to do that. I'm going to go over a few of those here today and you can try them out and see which one works best for you uh, in a particular situation. But first we need some audio to mess with. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, for this example, we're gonna hone in on the word two right here. And that's the one we're gonna be adding this effect to. Probably the most common way to do this is to use a send on the channel like you normally would for an effect but then just turn it on and off for the sections that you want using automation. Let me show you how that works. Let's use a big obnoxious reverb patch for this example, just so we can all hear it really clearly. So here's the reverb preset I wanna use. I'm dragging it onto the send section and it has created a send on the channel itself. So this is just basically saying, here's the volume. We're gonna send a copy of this signal somewhere else. And that copy is being sent to this channel, which has a reverb plugin on it. We can see it's a big plate reverb with a big, huge decay time to it. There's also an EQ on there, so it doesn't get muddy. So if we play this right now, it's what we expect. It just adds reverb to all four words. One, two, three. Okay. Isn't that nice? So how do we only add it to this section? We're going to use something called automation. There's a bunch of different ways. Depending on what software you're using, it's going to look a little bit different. But typically, it looks something like this. If I press A on uh, Studio One, I pull up the automation lane, and I can see an automation lane for my volume and for my panning. But I need to have one for the mute this little power on off button, the mute for this send. Because basically I want the send to be muted. One, two, three. And then to be unmuted, but just for the word two. How do we do that? Well, there, depending on your system, it's different. Studio One makes it actually really easy. I just click on the parameter I want. And we can see up here that the send mute was the last thing I clicked on. And I just click on this little A and it creates an automation lane for it. So now this yellow line here is basically an on off switch. Uh, for that mute. So I can say, hey you, I want you to go like this. So this is off, 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 on, off, off, off. And now it'll do that automatically for me without me having to click on it. One, two, three, four. Okay, pretty neat. So as you can imagine, once you get it set up, you can see it takes a couple steps to get it set up. But now you could go through and you could choose your sections throughout the song where you want there to be reverb and you just go like this. You choose the section and you pull down that parameter so it's just an on off switch back and forth. That can work great. So that's that's a pretty common way to do this. All right, so let me delete all that and let's start again and I'll show you another way that I like to do this. If it's something where I'm in a bit of a hurry and maybe I don't want to do the send automation thing for whatever reason, I'll do something different. What I'll do this time is I'll duplicate the track, okay? And I will call this, so if the first track is Vox for Vocal, this will be Vox Verb. And I will take the words that I want to do something different to, and I'll just copy them down there. Either copy them, or a lot of times I'll move them. So here I'm going to move it like this. So if we just listen right now, it should sound exactly the same. One, two, three. Okay, but now I'm going to add reverb to the second track. So the plugin's there already because we copied it, but I'm gonna say, turn the reverb on here. And now, one, two, three, four. Okay, so now we've essentially done that wherever we want. So almost just like the other way, we can do things like this. And now, one, two, three, four. Okay, it's doing the exact same end result, but we're just going about it a different way. 
Um, and if we run both of these vocal, just if you're thinking about this in terms of mixing, we could run both of these vocals to a vocal bus and I could do all my EQ and compression for the vocal there. So the dry vocal will sound the same and we'll have all the same EQ and compression. It's just split over two tracks. It's the same idea as if you wanted to process the verse and the chorus differently. A lot of times you'll split those to two different tracks, a vocal chorus and a vocal verse track, and you'll EQ and compress those differently. That's kind of what we're doing here. All right, now I wanna show you one other way of doing this that is, it's a little bit unique to Studio One, but other systems will do it, they'll just do it in a different way. So we're back to our dry vocal. One, two, and then what we're gonna do now is select this, we're gonna separate it into its own little region, and then if we come over to the inspector side over here, down towards the bottom, there's a thing called event effects. Now this is called, I think it's called audio suite, something like that in Pro Tools. And I think every system probably has something like this. So prior to this, everything we're doing, all the effects and the reverbs we're doing are happening on the channel level. So it's actually happening like on a virtual mixer, right? This is allowing us to put an effect on this chunk of audio, the actual audio itself, before it gets to the mixer. So I can apply a plugin here. So let's enable the event effects, and I will just drag that, those plugins that I have on the room reverb, I'll drag them here. Now it's on the individual track itself, and I want to come to this room reverb and set the mix to kind of half and half so we can hear both the dry and the wet signal. Uh, and I'll also want to give this a tail of, let's say, six seconds so the reverb tail keeps going. But now look what happens. We have no reverb plugin on the track. There's no send on the track. But listen. One, two, three, four. This is really handy. I almost never do this in a song because the other two ways I've shown you uh, work better for me. Uh, for one, I can see them in the mixer without having to think, oh, right, that has some sort of effect on it. Uh, but... This is really handy if you're doing a lot of dialogue or a big song with lots of little weird effects and you really only want to do it on this one particular piece of audio, then this is, this is pretty handy. And I can add distortion in here. I can do whatever I want. And then that effect remains just on this little clip of audio. One, two, three, four. Pretty cool. Now, the final way, and this is probably my least favorite way, but it's the way a lot of people tend to do things like this. Uh, they know that automation exists and they automate this way. I don't love it. So here's the way they would do that. They'll put the room reverb directly on the track itself. Um, so if we do that, the whole track sounds like this, right? One, two, three. And then they'll do some sort of automation to turn the whole plugin on and off. So in Studio One, this little button right here is our bypass button. So we use the same process as before. We click the button, we add an automation lane, and then we tell it to uh, turn off bypass for this piece of audio. And it goes like this. One, two, three, four. You can see why that doesn't work for a number of reasons. One, the reverb was still happening kind of underneath. It was just being silent. So when it came in, one, two, three, four just doesn't make a lot of sense. The tail doesn't happen. It's just in one specific spot. Doesn't work super great. Now, if you changed this to something like a distortion plugin, then I could see maybe doing that. Let's, let's try that here. Let's put red light distortion on here and we'll turn off the reverb. So then with red light distortion, we'll do the same, the same automation here. Okay, we can adjust it. And it sounds like this. One two, three, four. That I could get behind a little bit more. We've automated this distortion to come on and off. The problem here is I do this cute little automated distortion thing on Monday. Then I come back on Thursday, I'm working on the song, and I see this distortion plug in here and I forgot what it's doing. And okay, I see it's got this weird little discolored power button, but I'm, I'm not, it's hard to remember what's happening. And I have to go in and turn on the automation lanes because I don't see the automation lanes normally. Turn them on and then maybe I have to sort through to see, oh yeah, I bypassed the red light distortion plugin or I turned it on for this one note. It's too many layers to kind of go back and remember what I've done. Instead, what a better solution would be, would be what I showed you earlier, where I just took this audio, put it on a new track, and I could just put the distortion right on that track and never have it bypassed, right? So then I could always say, oh yeah, this is the distorted vocal, and if I look visually at the track, I can see the distorted vocal happens, oh yeah, it happens right here. 
um, on this part of the song. So it's all visual, it's all laid out, it takes up an extra channel, but I don't care about that. I can easily look at this and say, oh, the grayish, bluish tracks have distortion, the yellow tracks don't. Sweet, I can move on with my day. Now these are probably the most common ways to accomplish this turning effects on and off in real time throughout the course of the song, but I'm sure there are other ways to do it. If you've got a way that you like to do it, leave a comment below and let us know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and if you like mixing and you haven't checked it out yet, I've got a five-step mix guide that you can get for free. Just head over to fivestepmix.com, grab your free copy, and get to mixing. All right, see ya.